Okay. It is 6.05, so I think we will go ahead and get started. This is the public meeting to give everyone information on the Celeste Circle lift station and force main project. We do want to inform everybody that there is the option to listen to this presentation in Spanish. Um, if you would like to do that, there should be a little globe symbol down at your, your lower um, middle that you can select and you can choose Spanish for the presentation. Um, for now, I have everyone muted. When we get to the end of the presentation, there will be the opportunity to ask questions. And at that time, um, I will unmute everybody. Okay, so to start, I uh, would like to let you know of the project team. So this is the project being done by the City of Durham Department of Water Management. Uh, the design engineer for this project is Friesen Nichols. I am, my name is Krista Predis. I am the engineering project manager for Friesen Nichols. Um, from the Department of Water Management, we have on the meeting, Lisa Mitchell, who is the principal engineer. Hey, everybody. We have two contractors working on different pieces of this project. We have J.F. Wilkerson um, handling the force main construction. And we have Dellinger handling the lift station construction. Um, I believe on the phone we have Dean who is uh, with Dellinger. I am not sure if we have someone from J.F. Wilkerson. So just to kind of go over the agenda for this evening. So we're gonna discuss the project overview. Um, we'll have a Q&A and group discussion if needed. And then we will give everybody more information on how they can follow along on this project and, and stay informed. Um, again, we're gonna go through the full presentation. So if you have any questions, you, know, you can ask those at the end. Um, if you would like to, you can chat your question and then when we get to the end of presentation we can go over the questions that have come through via chat if you do want to use the chat feature there there should be a chat box on your lower menu bar so click chat the icon will look as um, this little black menu button the box will open you can enter your question and then at the end of the presentation we will review those and discuss So the project overview, we're going to discuss what is taking place, why this project is needed, the timeline, and what adjacent residents and businesses can expect. So to begin, uh, we do wanna let everyone know that this project has two main components that again, they're being done by two different contractors. We're doing this um, try to, to try to expedite construction rather than having this all kind of proceed um, by one contractor. So that's part of the reason for having two. So the reason for this is we need to replace the old lift station for several reasons, which we'll discuss in more detail. Um, and we're also going to discuss the reasons for the force main. So for the lift station, the reason that this is being done is the existing lift station is in poor condition. It needs to be relocated and it also needs to be upgraded to meet uh, the new demands that are coming into this, this sewer shed basin. So the location of the existing lift station is at 6000 George King Road, which is down at the end of this, this service road and the lift station is being relocated about 600 feet upstream to 103 Crossland Drive. Part of the driving force for this is that the existing lift station is currently in a floodplain, and it's also in Army Corps of Engineer property. Um, so this is a lease that has a, a termination point. So we have to move the lift station out of the floodplain and also off of core property. The site at 103 Crossland Drive was purchased in 2022, and this location was chosen because it would result in the least disturbance to property owners um, and will not require any new connections to be made for 
homeowner sewer services. So as part of that, the force main, uh, because we're upgrading the capacity, the force main will also need to be upgraded to a larger pipe size, which will provide the needed capacity. The new main will be installed parallel to the old main. It will be tested and then put into service. And then the old main will be abandoned in place. So a little bit more information on why we're doing this project. Um, as I mentioned, the lift station, the existing lift station is in poor condition. Uh, sewage naturally has high levels of hydrogen sulfide gas, which can lead to corrosion and structural degradation. So the walls of the existing lift station were beginning to deteriorate and fall into the wet well, which then causes issues with the pumps. Um, a short-term rehabilitation project was done in 2021. So some of you may have noticed construction around that time, and that was done just to address immediate concerns and provide reliable service until this new lift station was complete. Uh, another reason that this is being done is because, you know, changes in weather patterns have led to, you know, increased rainfall and, and flooding. And so because this lift station is in a floodplain, as a resiliency measure, they want to relocate the lift station outside of the floodplain so that it's, it can provide reliable service during storm events. Um, you know, flooding can shut down a lift station and lead to sewage backup, which nobody likes. So as part of Durham's best practices, they just want to ensure that all new lift stations and infrastructure is more resi resilient to severe weather events. So to discuss the project overview, the timeline, work is expected to start sometime next week. Um, both the lift station and the force main will be starting around the same time. So the lift station is going to take more time. It'll take roughly 530 days, and it's expected to be complete in the fall of 2024. The force main is expected to take about 190 days. However, however, we have provided up to 400 days in case of material delays, which is um, an ongoing problem in the construction industry. So some of the work that you'll see in the next couple of weeks will be site clearing, um, erection of fencing and erosion control measures, and probably like some mobilization. So you might see a construction trailer um, and that work will be limited to the lift station site and then the force main corridor. So what you can expect for the construction process is that the pipe installation will proceed with about 60 to 80 feet of pipe being installed per day. Um, the work will only take place on the weekdays, so there will be no weekend work. The lift station is expected to be done in about a year, and then there will be some testing and some you know, other equipment that isn't as much heavy construction. So you'll see trucks and equipment bringing materials to and from the sites. There will be temporary asphalt patching in areas where they have to do open cut construction. There will be materials staged within the project boundaries. And again, the, the overall scope of this is to install and test the new lift station and force main, switch all of the services from the old lift station to the new lift station, and then either demolish or abandon the existing sewer services and lift station. So this is an example of what typical lift station construction can look like. This is actually uh, another project that's currently being done by the city of Durham um, for the Githen School lift station. So typically the contractor is going to use heavy machinery where they will excavate a pit that's large enough to hold the wet well. They'll use shoring where necessary to provide a safe area for the laborers to work in. They'll lower these precast wet well rings into place and then they'll backfill with soil as they progress. Um, so for this, oh, 
sorry, for this particular project, there will not be blasting allowed. However, if they do reach rock and they have to do grinding, um, there may be some slight vibrations felt in the area as they grind the rock down. Uh, but again, there will not be blasting for this project. The force main work is going to proceed in segments. Um, it is, we'll show you a schedule on the next slide that kind of shows the areas they plan on working in and, and what time frame that will happen. So for each segment, they'll work to clear the area and then they'll begin excavating. They will place trench boxes in the excavation, which again, allows laborers to work safely. As each segment is completed, they'll backfill that trench with soil They'll place temporary seeding to stabilize the soil. And then once the entire main is in place, they'll do testing to make sure that there are no leaks. And as long as it passes testing, they'll go ahead and place permanent seeding or do the permanent asphalt repair where needed. This map shows a general uh, schedule for how the work is going to proceed. So as mentioned, the lift station will begin this, you know, in the next week or so, and it'll continue until April of 2024. The force main work, they'll initially work on the segment that goes under NC-54, and then the portion that parallels um, Highway 54. They will then proceed down um, Falcon Bridge Road, so close to the shopping center. And then they will proceed along Farmington and then Farrington Road. Um, the final piece will be done when they connect the portion that's off of Farrington to the South Durham Water Reclamation Facility. Uh, the two yellow portions, I did want to point out that you see that those are both being done in March to April of 2023. Those are done. Um, by a trenchless method. So the reason they're both being done at the same time is because one contractor will work as a sub and he will do both of those at the same time. So a little bit more about what to expect during construction. So at Highway 54, there will be an open cut of the service road past Crossland Drive. So for the duration of that work, anybody who needs to access George King Road may need to come from Ephesus Church Road. It's not expected that that closure is gonna take, um, you know, a very long amount of time. It's just enough for them to open cut, install the pipe, and then place a temporary asphalt patch. Um, along Hunting Ridge Road, that road will also have to be open cut, and so access will need to happen from Falcon Bridge or Ridgefield. And that will be the same process where they'll backfill, they'll have temporary patching, or they'll use steel plates to provide access once the pipe has been installed. On Falcon Ridge Road, the main is actually going to be under the pavement until it reaches Farmington Road. So through access on that road will be closed. However, access is going to be provided to the businesses that are located at 6110 Falcon Bridge Road. Um, it will likely end up that there's, you know, they'll have to access from one side or the other. And the contractor will coordinate with those businesses closer to that time. NC-54 is going to be done by a trenchless method, which means that they will basically auger a hole and push a casing pipe underneath that road. So there will be no closure of NC-54. However, you will see excavation pits on either side of the road. Along Farrington Road, this will also be crossed by trenchless methods. However, this is a much narrow construction corridor. And so the construction of the bore pits may require one, a temporary one lane closure. Um, if that does happen, then they will have, they'll maintain through traffic, but they'll likely have flaggers or some other kind of 
um, operation to kind of guide people through there. The sidewalk along Farrington Road is going to be closed during the bore construction. And then additionally, Farmington Drive will also likely require a one lane closure due to the proximity of the pipe to the edge of the roadway. Um, access for those who live on Bloomsbury Court will be maintained. So just to summarize, there, there will be some parking and lane closures. Uh, you may see traffic control and detours. They will maintain access to businesses and homes. And there will be some noise impacts. Um, they will try to minimize those and they will limit their work hours to 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. There is sometimes a possibility that weekend work has, happens, but that's always at the approval of the city of Durham. And it's typically work that does not um, cause large noise impacts. So in the coming weeks, what you will see is you may see contractors out there doing what we call a pre-construction video. So this is a way for them to document the conditions prior to beginning construction. And the you know, reason for doing that is to make sure that post-construction, everything is left in as good of con condition or better. Um, people that are going to be impacted in the short term will likely receive some type of door hanger, letting them know that work is gonna be in their area. You may also notice paint on the ground, which just shows that they're, they're basically marking the location of existing utilities. You may see some traffic control signage as they, they start marking off areas that they're going to work in. And again, you will see both contractors beginning their work in the next couple of weeks. Um, again, this is an example of what the door hanger may look like. On this, they've provided you with the contact information for their on-site superintendent. So if you have um, immediate questions that you would like to ask, you can call Corey Ritter, who is working for Jay of Wilkerson. Uh, Friesen Nichols is also going to have an on-site inspector. So you can contact either one of those people. And if there are any concerns, they can relay those to both the engineer and the city of Durham. And so with that, we can open it up to questions. Let me, let's see, unmute everyone. This is Wayne Cherry. We live at 8 Silver Birch Court. I'm trying to get exactly how that goes behind our house. We back up to uh, Farrington Road. Let's see, you back up to Farrington. Let me go back to... So are you... Can you see my cursor? Yes, keep going down just south to right about there. <laughs> okay. So this will, it will not be within your property, but you will likely hear noise as they are building the pipeline within the right of way. So along Farrington Road, the pipe is going to be outside of the pavement, basically in that grassy strip that's between your property line and the roadway. So you will likely hear some noise, um, but that's about the extent of impacts. And I know there's a good bit of water that comes down that ditch. Will you take care of all the drainage issues that are bound to arise? So they are going to be required as part of their permit. They do have to put erosion control measures. And the goal is always to try to I guess like keep any kind of soil deposition to the area that they're working in. Um, so you, if there are already, I guess, drainage issues, this shouldn't, like this isn't gonna make the situation any worse. 
Well, okay. Um, <laughs> so, and the goal is really to limit sediment that you see in any runoff. I, I know that Spectrum Cable has run some, uh, run their cable close to that highway. Is that going to be marked? Are you working with Spectrum? Yes. So Spectrum, um, they're going to mark the utilities. And, and anytime we have these kind of projects, you know, the goal is to not cause any disruptions to any type of services. But as part of their pre-construction activities, um, you know, they're working with them to let them know they're going to be in the area. So they have a good relationship that if for some reason they come across a spectrum line that they didn't know was there and it's impacted, they'll work with them to get it corrected as quickly as possible. We'll lose our cable part of the time. Yeah, we'll lose our cable. I guarantee you. <laughs> Hopefully that will not happen. So, but again, if something like that does happen, um, you know, you will give our contact information at the end of this. And so if if that happens and for some reason you can't find someone out there in the field to talk to, you can reach out to myself or Lisa as well. Were there any other questions? Or are you guys going to make my job really, really easy today? Okay, and I don't see any questions in the chat. So if there are no other questions, just to follow up, um, the city of Durham has a page dedicated to this project. So they will be posting updates to that webpage. Um, there should also be a way there to sign up to receive bi-weekly updates, email updates. Um, if you want, you could also put your email in the chat right now, and we can just go ahead and add you from this meeting. Uh, and again, there will be a full-time on-site construction observer. And you can also reach out and contact myself or Lisa. Okay, my name is Stephen Hill. I, I reside at 157 um, Celeste Circle. And I just, just joined in. I'm sorry I'm late, but I'm just curious as to where the um, lift station is proposed at. I assume it's going to be um, at Nelson's Drive in uh, Crosland. Yes, let's go back to that slide. So the lift station is going to be located at the property that's at 103. Rossland Drive. So it is right at that corner property. That's where the, the old house was at that they burnt down? Correct. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. And uh, so I, you said you joined late. This will be recorded and shared. So um, if you have, if there's something that you missed, you can feel free to ask now or you can catch up when this is posted. I, I can't think of anything. I mean, I guess this is um, in preparation for the widening of 54. No, the reason is actually, and I can go back to that slide. So one of the main drivers is that the existing lift station um, is in really poor condition. Uh, another reason that it's being relocated and not just replaced in place is because the existing lift station is actually in a floodplain. And it's also hmm. located on Army Corps of Engineer property. Um, because of those two things, it has to be relocated. The Corps will no longer grant uh, new easements on their properties. So it has to be taken off of their land, essentially. OK. Did you have any other questions? No, I mean, it doesn't impact. Um, my property, I'm, I'm several hundred thousand or hundred thousand yards away from it. So um, is, is it a below ground substation, lift station or above ground? So uh, the wet well, it is a below ground uh, lift station. There will be, and I, I guess I should have mentioned this, there will be a 
some equipment above ground, there will be a small precast um, concrete building that houses electrical equipment. There yeah. will also be some above ground odor control equipment. Uh, so that is one improvement that's being made. The old lift station did not have odor control measures and the lift station um, is gonna have several forms of odor control. So um, it's, it's gonna be a drastic improvement. <laughs> Yeah, and it also have an emergency gener backup generator? Yes, it will have an emergency generator. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Well, good. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, any other questions? All right. Well, Thank you for attending. Um, again, any if you think of any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us and we will do our best to answer those. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks everybody. Yeah, thank you all for your time. Bye.